In a previous video, I went over how to ship and pack with Easy Post and ship out of Odoo. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do that, but with multiple warehouses. So if you have multiple warehouses and you want to split up a sales order into different shipments from multiple warehouses, I will show you how to do that here. First, let's make sure we have everything configured correctly. We're going to do estimate cost for our UPS ground using Easy Post. So the first thing we want to do is make sure that we have our warehouses set up. Currently we have one, so I'm going to create a new warehouse. And this is going to be warehouse number two, and we're going to give it a short code, warehouse two. And in my previous video, I also mentioned changing the address of where this is coming from. So we can create a new address. We'll save this first. And you'll see our shipping address right here is our default address. This is the same one for warehouse number one. So we'll just call this warehouse one. And what I want to do now is actually switch that where the second address. So we're going to ship this from a different location. So we'll pop open this contact. We'll add an additional contact under here. And we'll name it. Warehouse 2 location. Oops, that's not what we want to do. Save this. Let's just do it from our contacts to be more clear. We're going to create a new individual, and the company, the parent company, is going to be Kevin's School Store. Change it to company location 2. Or you can add just an address underneath as a delivery address. So we can do it this way, or if we discard this, we go to Kevin's Cool Store, we can edit, add a different address under delivery address. We'll say warehouse two, and we'll change the address slightly here. Um, we'll say, let's see, one, two, three, Jersey Street, and we'll leave it as Buffalo, New York. We just want to see the different um, different addresses on our packing slips. So we'll save and close that, save, go back to our warehouses, go to warehouse number two, and change this address here to warehouse two. Next thing we want to do is look at our overview. We'll just group this by warehouse and save this as the default just for ease of use. And I'm going to add some inventory to our warehouse too. In our previous video, we add where, um, inventory to warehouse one. So we'll go to inventory adjustments. We'll do warehouse two stock, product A. We'll add five units here. Warehouse two stock, product B five units, and warehouse two, product C, five units. You can select these three, apply. Now our inventory is all set up. So now we want to look at our routes. So inside of inventory, we're going to go to configurations. We don't see routes right here, so we're going to go to settings. We're going to scroll down and enable multi-step routes and save this. This is going to allow us to create different routes for our sales order lines to apply to our sales order lines. So we'll go to routes and you'll see that some here are made by default. So we can deliver in one step to from our San Fran warehouse um, and deliver in one step from our other warehouse. So we'll just edit these. We're not using the, the San Fran, so we'll just, we're going to say warehouse, warehouse one delivery. And as you see down here, we are pulling our stock from our warehouse stock into our customer location. So when products are needed in our customer location, so this is by the delivery order, products are pulled from our warehouse stock. We're going to disable this route. 
we're going to make this available on sales order lines. And what we're going to do is um, we can change the applicability here so we can apply it to any warehouse. And the reason why we need to do this is to make sure that we can select this on a sales order line, no matter what the warehouse is set for on the, on the actual sales order, which I'll show you in a second. So we'll save that. We'll do the same thing for the other delivery route. So let's take a look at deliver in one step here. And we'll do warehouse two delivery. And the reason I'm deselecting warehouses, we don't have to deselect that. I'm just doing it for simplicity purposes. This will make this route the default route or available for a specific warehouse. But in this example, we're just going to apply the, the routes on the sales order lines. Same thing here. And we have it available on sales order lines. So now when we create a new order, we're going to add a couple products. We'll add product A, product B, and product C. If you come over to other info, you'll see our default warehouse is warehouse one. So with removing our warehouse applicability on the route, it allows us to set the sales order line route so this route so we're going to enable routes right here with warehouse one delivery and warehouse two delivery regardless of what warehouse we set here otherwise if we leave the applicability it's only going to apply to the warehouse that we have set here so we'll set the route we're going to say that this product A is going to go from warehouse one. This product B is going to go from warehouse two and product C is going to go to warehouse one. So what happens if we know we have one unit in warehouse one and one where unit in warehouse two and we want to split this. So we can just add another line for product A and we can say this product A is going to go from warehouse two. We can save that. Now we have, once we confirm the sales order, two deliveries will be generated. One from warehouse A, uh, one from warehouse one, and, and one from warehouse two for these three units. We can add our shipping here. Say UPS ground, we'll get an estimate rate. And now we'll confirm our sales order. Keep in mind that the system doesn't necessarily know that we're shipping from two warehouses. So this UPS ground rate doesn't take into consideration multiple different packages. If you wanted that, we'll do it in the second example and we'll do real cost so it can get the rate for the actual cost of these shipments. So now we have two deliveries. We can see it from here or we can go over to our inventory. And we'll see we have one delivery order in warehouse one and one in warehouse two. So our delivery, our warehouse one team will just see this delivery, not pay too much mind to it, just ship this out as normal. So we'll put this in a pack. We'll say the total weight is two pounds. And we can just simply validate that. So this is our warehouse one that we use in our first example. So if we take a look at that tracking, we'll see that it's coming from one Seneca street now in warehouse two. So our warehouse two team sees the order that we needed to deliver. We can put these in packs. So let's say that this requires two different shipments. So I'll put this first one in a pack. And I'll put that last one in its own package as well. And now we can validate this. And now our two shipments are generated. You'll see this one comes from 123 Jersey Street. 
and it's different from our original deliver from address. And like I said, those are set on the warehouse themselves. So now if we go over to our sales order, nothing has changed. But we do have both of our deliveries here that are done from two separate warehouses. Now in our final example here, let's go and change this to real cost. So now we're gonna charge the customer the actual cost of the shipment. We'll go into this delivery order, we'll duplicate this. So simplify it a bit. So we have product A coming out of warehouse one and then product C and A coming out of product, uh, warehouse two. We'll save. We'll add the shipping once again. We'll get the rate. And this time it's going to be an estimate rate and it's not going to apply the cost until after we actually ship out these packages. So let's confirm. We have these two delivery orders. We'll put this in a pack and ship it out. We'll validate. And we'll see our cost 1872. If we look at our packages, we'll see the items in that package. And now if we go back to our sales order, we'll see that the 1872 rate was added for that first shipment. And if we go into our second shipment, put this item in a pack, validate, We'll see our tracking number down here, the cost 1872 once again. This is the proper warehouse, one Seneca. We go to our sales order, we'll see two, two different shipping uh, for each one of those packages or each one of those delivery warehouses. Now we can invoice the customer of course, and that is how we ship from multiple different warehouses.